show about a Jewish guy named Al Stein. In real life, he writes for a magazine sometimes. But now he's got his own cartoon show on VH1, which they hope will be a hit because they sure need one. And even though the show has got sort of a sitcom feel, there's a band and some celebrities for more appeal. Joel likes to ask him questions that'll make him squirm. Sometimes he gets punched out, but Joel never learns. Hey, Joel, what do you know? You got your own show. Try not to blow it, cause if you're not funny, then you'll soon be gone. And they can fill the time with some more Lenny Kravitz songs than you'll be. Back in obscurity where you belong. Hey, Joe. Dark Week starts right now. Right now, hostile forces are conspiring against my VH1 talk show, Three Minutes with Joel. I'm the host, VH1's Joel Stein. We had a dark week coming up, a week off, a week with no shows, no pressure, but someone, or some, thing, was trying to eliminate our dark week. This is how it all began. This has been the darkest week of my life. Catch up on some much needed sleep Or maybe hit some hot new clubs And hook up with some creep Kevin's going camping somewhere Down in the deep south Where all the locals tell him Boy, you've got a pretty mouth Frank Museums in Amsterdam, Europe? Not Amsterdam Avenue? Forget that, baby. What are you doing in my face? You're supposed to be off this week. One last show to bank. We shifted some things around because we got a pretty special guest. Just shoot it and leave. See ya. Actually, Z, I wanted to show you something. Is this about a new set again? Yes and no. No, because it's not a set. <laughs> what a word. So 1998. It's my new conversational locus. Bye, Joel. Look, I'm sure we both agree that this cramped little locus is a bit confining for three minutes that are, in their way, so big. You know that Carson Daly's chair costs more than my entire locus? Stop calling it that! And when your ass is worth as much as Carson Daly's, we'll get you a new chair to put it in. Just imagine this is my new set. I'll start by imagining you drew it better. Well, no knock against the kid, but you should have seen the Kevin version that I had to hastily scrap. It was so, you know what I mean? Architectural digesty? No, my apartment's been an architectural digest. Fantastic! What if we copy my new set straight from your apartment? Does that make you more comfortable or less comfortable with the idea? You have two chairs. That's all you need for two people talking to each other. Need? Since when is anything in TV need-driven? Who needs any of these pointless programs on VH1, huh? Bad road to go down? Very bad. She hated your set. Dismissed it. Out of hand. Oh, gee, I stayed up all night for a week on that. You know, Z, show her a bunch of stick figures and she might react the same way. I fought for you, man. Hey, Joel, guess who doesn't have to work on his presentation speech for the VH1 Us 2 Video Awards? You mean me? No Us 2 Awards for Joel? Damn! I thought you'd be happy. Didn't you say the awards show is just a bunch of lick-spittle phonies shilling for the man? Exactly! I belong on that show! It was to be my validation, my public entry into the VH1 celebrity family. You're still in the family. You're just the drooly kid they feed in the kitchen. It's insulting. I fought for you, man. But Michelle, Joel would be such a perfect presenter. What a lick spittle phony. You're so lucky to have him. Sorry, Barb. The award show comes at the end of our dark week, so the Joel team is unavailable that day. I'd be there in a second, but ask Joel to sacrifice vacation time to flatter some celebrities? Whoa, watch him go off. I didn't realize he had a side. Oh, he's got a side. And you don't want to see it. Maybe I should call Barb Bander. She's always liked me. Don't. She's got a side. Um, Michelle, the Bare Naked Ladies lady says we canceled on them. What? She's nuts! Our final show before Dark Week, we're not canceling on anyone. Get her back. Heard about the Bare Nakeds, huh? What do you know about this, Joel? Just the Elton John part. Now what? Am I supposed to go after your freaking Lucky Charms? I got us Elton John. It was one of my finest moments. I had 14 floors to convince Sir Elton to do our show. 
I wanted his pelt in our canoe. You'll feel comfortable doing my show, I said. Ask anyone who hasn't walked off in a huff. But I still needed that last closer. The extra time was crucial. I'll be happy to come on three minutes, he said. You unspeakable- uh, Please, save the good stuff for the show. Hey, do you think the girl on Full House looked like Princess Diana? You want to take a call from her on air? You said see you later to the Bare Nakeds because of a flimsy promise from Elton John to replace them? Stare me down all you want, Michelle, but you will see I am like one of those marksmen who can lie for hours atop a building with a Redfield telescope mounted on top of my Remington 762 millimeter M401 sniping rifle, never blinking! Wow, Joel, I thought you were going to read those Tom Clancy novels during Dark Week. Maybe I got an early start. Control booth. Well, we tape in 20 minutes. The crew's here and Sir Elton isn't. Where's your pelt now, Davy Crackhead? He'll be here. Elton John just bailed. Unless, you know, something comes up. Like visa problems. You know what? He's famous for not getting all his shots. Now we have to come in during our dark week to do a fill-in show. Come on. We're not beaten yet. Who are we going to book in two minutes, Joel? Osmond. Oh, right. Ozzy Osbourne. The guy everybody wants and nobody can get. Come on, Joel. Get real. I didn't say anything. Not Osbourne. Osmond. Donny Osmond. Donny Osmond. I, uh, forgot I called you. I'm used to it. But you're here. Great. So tell me, what have you been doing with that career of yours? Wait, save the good stuff for the show. Do some research. Fast. So, Donny Osmond. Um, you were a bubblegum idol, weren't you? I guess I was, a long time ago. Before I got stage fright. Um... Really? What is a bubblegum idol? Does it mean that bubblegum idolizes you, or does it imply you're an idol made of bubblegum? A false and non-nutritious hero we chew and chew but may never swallow. I think it's just an expression, like the term stage fright. Good point. What is your favorite kind of gum? Or, or favorite anything? Um, Michelle, we have kind of a problem. It looks like Donnie's whole career predates Yahoo, Google, Jeeves, and VH1, so uh, we don't have any research. Watch this. I suppose you could use the genealogy of Ozzy Osbourne's shih tzus. Hey, I know. Uh, your sister Marie. How's she? She's great, thanks. Other than an occasional crippling bout of stage fright. I'll tell you what's odd about stage fright. It's the way it can come creeping up on you. It almost wrecked my career. Thanks for asking me to bring my guitar along, Joel. It starts with the eyes of the audience drilling into your soul. Your nostrils fill with the stench of your self-love's decay, like the last rose of summer in a hobo's underpants. Yank him? Technical problems? No way. 43 seconds to Dark Week. And here's a song I wrote about it. Back when... Why, back when I had stage fright. A million eyes are eating me Whene'er I'm on TV Lapping up my flop sweat with glee, with glee. Take my skin and wear it. Take my skin and wear it. Take my skin and wear it. And you'll feel just like me. Oh, won't you please help me, Marie? Great song. Maybe not Paul Anka great, but it's a work in progress, Joel. Joel? Well, I guess that's it for today's three minutes. I'm Donny Osmond, and kids, if you smoke or drink hot beverages, I'll be seeing you in hell. Great news. I could use some. You're going to be a presenter at the VH1 Us 2 Video Awards. I kick some ass for you, boy. I don't care if it is your dark week, Michelle. Besides, you're in today, aren't you? Well, we had to make some fixes off yesterday's catastrophe. I heard. Joel got Ozzy. Everyone at VH1 wants Ozzy. No one gets Ozzy. Joel gets Ozzy. Now I've got to have Joel as a presenter. Actually, it was Donnie, not Ozzy. Osmond, not Osborne. Nice try, Michelle. Look, either Joel's a presenter for us, or I go over your head to Z and get him. And I'll do that. Because I have a side, and you know I have a side. See? I told you I fought for you. You want something, I don't give up till it's yours. This Friday night, that's you. Cameras? There are gonna be cameras? When you go on at 10 p.m., choice presenter time slot, there'll be muchos cameras. Cameras everywhere you look. <gasps> Donnie's song. A million eyes are eating me whenever I'm on TV. I can't do it. 
I have stage fright. Oh, give it a rest. Do you feel stage fright right now? Mm, no. I feel frightened that I'll get stage fright. That's so different. You're a pro. A pro who had an episode. Like Margot Kidder's Toothless Wanderings, Robert Downey's Surprise Drop-Ins, Jim Jones' Little Tantrum in Guyana. A minor incident, nothing to worry about. Oh, I can't do it. Sure you can. Here, let's practice. See? You do not have stage fright. Stage fright. Stage fright. It can make a career disappear overnight. Stage fright. Stage fright. It screwed up Carly Simon, but it works for Stephen Wright. Take my skin and wear it. Take my skin and wear it. Take my skin and wear it. And you'll feel just like you're me. I'll never work again in TV. That awful tune. Get out of my brain. Out. Lapping up my flop sweat with glee, with glee. Lapping! I can't stop feeling their tongues! I guess you better face it, Michelle. Our worst fears have come true. I know. Day four of Dark Week and we're still working. I meant Joel being in a paralyzing emotional crisis. Oh yeah, that too. But it's hard getting Joel's cylinders firing when he's not around. Well, it's time to rewrite the playbook, Michelle. You're gonna have to get him. Go in and get him. You mean to his apartment, where he lives and touches things and then eats off them? No way. You do it. I wish I could, but I'm trying to find the answer to what happened. Yeah, good idea. Let's both stay right here in the office, which is not Joel's apartment, and look for answers on the computer. I can't help but think it has something to do with that smile. How do you get a smile like that? Drugs? Gotta be. So working backwards, if I can determine what he's on, we can have the lab break it down. Lab? You know, Maddie, the studio PA, the one the executives are always hanging with? You mean crystal meth, Maddie? Uh, yeah. He owns some, um, chemical analysis equipment. I don't want to know, but I do want his cell phone number. Anyway, if we get Maddie to break down whatever Donnie's on, maybe we'll know what went into his stage fright curse, and maybe, just maybe, we can find a cure for Joel. Teensy problem. How do you know what to test? What do you do, Kev? Ask Donnie exactly what kind of goofy beans he's been eating? He'll laugh at you. He's got a side. We don't have to ask him. I'm way ahead of you. I'll buy a sample of his urine on the internet. Dolls and bears, pottery, urine. Human animal, public figures. Hey, look, Michelle, Mahatma Gandhi, urine flask. Yeah, we'll bid on that later. Keep scrolling. Finally, TV star urine. Network cable, male, female, Louis Anderson. There it is, the O's. Osborne, Osborne, Osborne. Osborne, Osborne, Osborne. Man, Osborne, that Osborne, guy's done Osborne. some drug testing. Osborne, 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 Osborne. Osborne, 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 Osborne. It's all Osborne. No Danny Osmond at all. He's clean as a whistle, the insidious fiend. You know where this leaves us, Michelle? Plan B. It's in your hands. Not all of it. The award shows in 36 hours and Joel's still holed up in his apartment. All right. Pray for me, Kev. I'm going in. Joel? Let me guess. You're spending so much time sleeping, it's easier just to wear the bed. Nobody gets me like you get me, Michelle. Back off and get dressed, Casper. And don't tell me it's pointless for you to come into work. It's so pointless! How can I be Joel Stein when I have stage fright? I'm through. I'll never cool my heels in the hospitality suite again. Look, up at the studio, Kevin's been working really hard on this idea he had. I'm sorry, I can't go back there. And I've got this new leotard I wanted your opinion on. Come on in, I'll get dressed. <laughs> Gilligan. You know, in real life, on that island with those women there, someone would have been murdered in the first week. I'll be out here. Michelle? Michelle? I'm starting to sense the presence of savage eyes here in the darkness. This is a terrible mistake. Leotard. I'm good. All right, VH1's Joel Stein. It's showtime. What? It's your new set, Joel. 
You wanted one, we built you one. To show how much we care. This is all dumpster crap. Some of it was still on the curb. How's a set full of cast-off junk supposed to build my confidence? Because, um, stage fright is just a kind of insecurity. Probably from thinking big stars are better than you. But now, when you look across at some celebrity and see him sitting on this crap, surrounded by this other crap, you'll think he's crap. Or she's. Crap knows no gender. Right, Michelle? Right. Katie Lang can be crap, too. Especially when she does that supper club crap. But of course I think big stars are better than me. Why else would I have built my life around sucking up to them? Um, exactly right, Joel. And that's why it's so important that you get back to that meaningful, significant life you've carved out for yourself. You know, Joel, Gene Simmons from KISS has been calling all week asking to talk to you. So we booked him for today. Kevin and I will run the cameras, you do the Q&A. Real low pressure. We bank it for right after dark week. I couldn't. Don't say that until you've at least tried out your new host chair. Come on, Joel. The best thing when you fall off is always to get right back on the whore. Horse. I'm working on several levels here, Kevin, okay? Well... This set does reflect that new filth is clean design trend I read about in details. And it is the hippest magazine on earth. Maybe I'll try just a quick sit down. But you guys turn your backs. Sure, you bet. Okay, Joel. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I can handle this. Me here, Gene Simmons there. The lights on. I think he's going for it. Filth is clean. Is there a bigger idiot on the planet? The camera rolling? The million eyes? Eating me? Uh-oh. Hey, Joel. In here. <laughs> it's like this, bro. You should climb out now because this set is now the property of he who puts the one in VH1. That's me, the Leaf of 60 Minutos with Leaf. Okay. What I like here is that this set is filthy and filthy is the new clean. The way last week clean was the new filthy. Cheryl, keep up with clean filthy. I'm liking it. Okay, sort to pull rank on you, Joel, but like Elton's coming on and when he sees this filth Amundo set, he's gonna say, Leaf, you hot dolly, you've done it again. To the Batmobile. I love saying that. Quote from Gilgun's Island, I think. Close the lid. Hello, Kiss Army. Hi, Jim. We're running behind. Then I'm too late. The rumors were true. Donny Osmond's been here and he's given Joel stage fright. You mean you know something about how Donny does it? Something. Remember when Kiss stopped touring? Please don't take me to that place, Mr. Simmons. I was just about over it. Well, contrary to popular belief, we didn't quit because we sucked. It was the Donny Osmond curse. May I sing you a tribute song I've written in Kiss style, he asked. For a goof, we said sure. Tribute on. The goof was on us. Wow. Can we talk about makeup later? You gotta focus here, kitten. Donnie gets rid of his own stage fright by passing it on to somebody else with that creepy song. Now Joel's gotta do the same. I'll take the bullet. Sing to me, Joel. No, Kevin, no! Well, why not? Very noble, son. But the curse can only be passed to another performer. Or whatever you call guys like Joel. Wait, if the curse can be passed on, why does Donnie keep getting reinfected? These are good questions! Donnie reinfects himself because he's noticed that every time he passes it on, his teeth get bigger. That's it? The guy likes big teeth. Now, heed my words. Pass on the Donnie curse. Wait, who cursed Donnie originally? I have already said too much! Andy Williams. Well, guys, it's obvious. I'll never be able to interview a celebrity again until I've passed along the Donnie curse to... To who? I know where there'll be a whole theater full of worthy showbiz turds to pick from. Come on, Joel. We've got to decide on just one. Look, let's just go with Celine Dion. You go, girl. She deserves it just for that. It's my curse, my pick. Elton John, he owes me. I know. Let Kevin decide. Me? Curse somebody? My minister back home wouldn't like that. Let's curse him. Okay, forget Kevin. We'll... Hey, it's like this, Joel, bro. What's up? I've pulled rank on you again. You were supposed to present next. No way I'm presenting. Then I'm presenting again later. I am the king of the presenting. Whoa, bro, don't be looking at me like he has a side, because I do not have a side. And before I present the award for hottest ass in a video, I would like to dedicate it to the starving families of the following debt-ridden nations around the world, which I've listed in order of gross national product. God, he drones on like a bee using a vibrator. Go to some candid backstage shots now. A million eyes are eating me when here I'm on TV. <laughs> lapping off my face with glee, with glee. What do you think, Right? Really? 
You can't find Leaf? Sure, I'll step in. What does it mean to be an awards show presenter? Is he just a cog in the machine? Or is he perhaps the machine itself? He's worse than Bono. Michelle, get him off there. You see, award winners bloom and fade so quickly. Like the last rose of summer in a hobo's underpants. But award presenters, like the fungus under that self-same hobo's fingernails, are truly the concrete asphalt mix from which an awards show foundation is poured. I remember. Ozzy? Donnie! Uh, good night, everybody. Worked like a charm. Where'd you get that stuff so fast? Men's room. When I saw Keith Richards asleep in a stall, I borrowed his teeth, and I got the toupee from Richie Sambora. Richie Sambora doesn't wear a toupee. So that's why he got so mad.